Yo, what's up? It's NLE Chopper. Be sure to check out the Michael Sean Show every Saturday on the CW33. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the man that has been fired by radio stations across the country, <laughs> divorced by his high school sweetheart, and dumped by his fiance of 15 years, yet managed to make it to TV. Give it up for your host, the hilarious Michael Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Michael Sean Show, and I am Michael Sean. Listen, today, the man that I have literally followed, I hate to admit it as a grown man, that I've literally followed on Instagram, TikTok, all types of social media. Some people sit on MySpace, whatever, Facebook, whatever. Mr. Charleston White is going to be here. Now, the reason why I want him here and the reason why we have the pleasure of having him is because he has views and opinions that people really don't want to admit that they agree with. And I will admit that today. I disagree on some things, but there's a majority of things that I do agree with him on. And we're going to have him here, not for this show, but for two shows. Two shows. So get on your social media and make sure you spread the word right here on the CW33. We start at 1230. Shout to Shawnee Scott in Media Room 360. But right now, all we have to do is a commercial break and the drama will begin. I don't know what this man's about to say. I don't know how he's going to say it. I just know he can't curse or we won't be on TV after this break. Yeah, you. Are you a victim of domestic violence? Since 2013, From Ordinary to Extraordinary has helped over 3,000 women, and we want to continue to rebuild the community with one family at a time. Please make a donation or sign up for volunteer opportunities today at IamFOTE.org. No matter how you choose to get involved, know that every bit counts. From Ordinary to Extraordinary is a 501c3 nonprofit organization designed to empower women and girls that have experienced domestic violence. Want your book or music to be published? Skip the confusion and rejections from others. Let BePublished.org publish and promote your work for less. BePublished.org handles it all, from cover design to worldwide distribution. With high quality and fast turnaround, you even keep rights and royalties. Everything was perfect. You made my dream come true. My book and CD look so good. Call 972-880-8316 now. BePublished.org. 972-880-8316. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Michael Sean Show. I'm Michael Sean, and today we have a guest that uh, a lot of people call themselves social uh, media influencers, and they throw that thing. You could have five followers, and you think you're an influencer. Well, today we have somebody who really moves the media and shakes everything up in the social media world, no matter what, if it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, no matter what it is. And he's an interview that some people are scared to have. But we're not here at the Michael Sean Show, Mr. Charleston White. What up? What's, What's good? Up, What's good, sir? Hey, man, I'm glad to be here, man. Yeah, glad all right, to be before here. we get into all, all, all your views and opinions, okay. um, we have a Black Panther on, on the stage. And um, this, is, this is my, this is my co-host. Yeah, this yeah, somebody. Yeah, so we brought the Black Panther simply because we need to liven things up on the set. Okay, say what's up, Panther. Exactly. That's yeah, what we yeah. need every guest yeah, to say. Yeah. What's up to the Panther? And just in case, uh, do you have? We don't have a name. We just call him Black. But do you do you think there's a name we could we could? Is there a suggestion? There's Black Panther. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's Black it. Panther. Just Black Panther. Just Black Panther. All right, you Black Panther from here. And then on out. And, and then he'll go on to be just Black. And just Black. And just Black. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me get let me get to this. First of all. I'm thinking to myself, right now we know you from being on social media every day. It feels like we see you every day with, a, yeah. with, with your opinions and everything. And my question is, when was the first time that you looked into a phone and you decided I'm going to record something and I'm actually going to post it? Uh, when, when Facebook first added the, the, the live 
action button to, to Facebook because right. everything was pre-recorded. So I used to pre-record uh, a lot of the work that I did for community work uh, in the juvenile systems. Uh, we used to pre-record everything uh, when we was at the alternative school at J.D. Hall Learning Center in Lancaster Independent School District. Right. So we used to pre-record these. But when, when Facebook gave us the live button, uh, that's when I started talking into a phone. Yeah, looking at myself, and it wasn't number be two people right there. So, uh, but I was excited to be talking to two people uh, because uh, I used Facebook at the time when they, the live option. Uh, I used to vent, so I would come to Facebook and vent. Right, uh, right, right. Uh, as a frustrated co community activist, uh, sometime as a as a uh, struggling father, uh, mm -hmm. talk about the issues as a, as a struggling father. Uh, I've even gotten on there as an upset black man and, and, and bash single black women. I joined a group one time on Facebook uh, that was called uh, Bash Single Black Women. But I was in, in search of something. Uh, right. I, I was trying to find an identity uh, outside of the streets and here's social media. Right. So, uh, so I came to social media uh, trying to lead the streets. Uh, and this was a whole different world for me because in, in this world, uh, it was law abiding. Okay, uh, okay. At the time. Right. I, I was in community college when, when I discovered social media, uh, Tarrant County Community College. So it was a whole new world for me. Uh, and the streets wasn't on social media. Uh, as time progressed, uh, the streets came to social media. Right. And when the streets came to social media, it, by that time, I'm a community activist and I'm frustrated with the streets. I'm tired of the streets. I've abandoned the streets. Okay. Uh, I've abandoned the street culture mentality, the street mindset. So I've totally turned my back on the streets uh and at this time i'm saying man you know what i'll call the police too uh, <laughs> that <laughs> you know what's funny when you say when you say things like that it's things that i've been saying but i ain't i wasn't bold enough i to, wasn't either <laughs> but the, but that, that's my thing when you start doing this when do you know that something in your life like something is i changing? feel like a grown man i finally feel like a man when I, really? stood, when I stood up and said to my community, uh, I will call the police if I see something wrong. Uh, before then, I didn't feel like a man. Be because in my, man, in my mind, uh, all good men would rather the police come sacrifice themselves because this is what they get paid to do. And I stay here with my family, protect my home, and let the police go be police. Right. And so that's why I called them. Uh, because they really work for me. They work for my tax dollar. Uh, they're here to service my community. They're here so uh, I can't protect our home. So why wouldn't me, as being a, a, a wanting to be a good man right. and wanting to be a good neighbor, why wouldn't I call the police? And, 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 I, and I get that. And I don't mean, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I get that. How do you balance it when you see the relationship between the police and black and brown people to call because people are going to be like yeah you keep saying you want to call the police but when you call the police you see what could happen uh, i got pulled over one time uh my first semester uh at community college i get pulled over because i still had one foot in the street so i was still trying to sell marijuana mm -hmm. while, while going to community college and, and balance a, a financial need right so i get pulled over one day with with a quarter pound of marijuana Two Dallas cops, they say, hey, I'm looking for this. I'm looking for this. Do you have any? Hey, I got some marijuana right here. <laughs> but, why? Why? but why? But why? Because, because if you get a police officer to come to your window and he says, hey, I'm with the narcotic unit. I'm not looking for no small amounts of marijuana. I'm looking for crack, guns, pounds of weed, right. and this. Right. You got an option. You already know your partner probably got some crack on him. Because you just picked him up from his spot. Okay, Y'all finna okay. go to DG's. Okay. I'm in college with, 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 with probably maybe a, a little over a quarter pound or under. Smoking out of it, right? Right, On right. a Friday night. We're not going to go do anything troublesome, but our tail light is out. Obviously, they looking for something. Right. If he tell you this, well, I'm smart enough to know if he's saying I'm narcotics. Okay, this is what he's looking for. Man, I ain't for the BS, the officer. Right. Let's start a good rapport. Hey, man, this is what I got. Whatever he got is on him, but this is what I got. Right. Okay. So uh, ultimately, uh, the police officer let us go. And, and, and he noticed that I had, a, I had my father's 
military flag in, in the back window. I had just buried him. He, he was in the Navy. So that officer was able to relate to that flag. He said, man, I was in the Navy. Why are you out here selling pot? I said, man, it's not mine. It's my brother's. Well, what's your brother's name? Kevin White. I told him my brother's name, but my brother was in prison. Right. Uh, I was able to build a rapport. But, but what I learned is if you out here doing wrong, and you get caught doing wrong, mm -hmm. why not go pay for your wrong? See, th that's logical. And I get what you're saying. But what if you're not doing I I'm trying to see how do you balance. What if you're not doing wrong and the you see the history of the police and black people and brown people? Well, you have, you have, you have power. I I've, I've written complaints against police officers and, okay. and, and it's been effective. I've also intentionally went and, and, and lied on, on, a, on a police officer, knowing that this lie could cause harm. I, I lied on a, on a, on a very high-ranking uh, Dallas gang unit officer, uh, Officer Torres. Uh, he was highly decorated for bringing down the West Side, the West Dallas Gator Boys. Right. Uh, a lot of my friends was involved in that. Uh, I had an encounter with, with Officer Torres where they did the normal normal thing, you know, frisk you to feel for drugs. Right. Well, I lied and said that, that these officers done something to me, that they run their fingers through my, through my buttocks uh, as if it was a sexual assault. And I went and filed a 13-page affidavit knowing I'm lying because they was rough when they frisked me. Right. right. And plus they done got my homeboys. I know if you go file a complaint on a police officer, that complaint stays on his record, whether it's true or not. The average citizen don't know that, so they think they don't have no power to fight back if a cop unjustly does something. You have rights as a citizen, even against this officer. I misused my rights. I took the time to contact Chief Conkle at the time, or uh, I contacted Chiefs, uh, uh, Senator Royce West. Uh, I spoke with Kevin, a guy by the name of Kevin Bass from Senator mm -hmm. Royce West's office. He told me what to do to file a complaint. I went to Internal Affairs. Uh, they took the complaint serious. Uh, I spent probably over eight hours with Internal Affairs lying <laughs> uh, because this was out of my hate for police. I'm doing this out of hate, not out of because he done something wrong. Out of your hate for prior things that have happened. Yeah, but no, okay. no, listen. Man, I've been operating as a criminal from juvenile, from a juvenile delinquent. Right. And all my years of operating as a criminal, I've never really been mistreated by the police. Never. From jail to juvenile, I've never, I, I, don't, I don't felt like I've been mistreated. Uh, I don't feel like I done been racially profiled and pulled over by the police and not went to jail. Right. Uh, I don't also feel like I'd have been racially profiled, pulled over by the police and should have went to jail and didn't go. See, when you say this is what gets me when you say stuff like that, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. But then it feels like and I, I got to get to other stuff, but then it feels like we're giving a pass from the real corrupt police officers. So for the real corruption that goes on when people are getting killed and losing their lives. But you have a different opinion on well, that. Well, this is what I say. Uh, they kill more white people than they do black people. The, in, in America, police shoot more white people than they do black people, according to the FBI statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the hood every day, homie. Uh, I don't see the police shoot a bunch of black people. Right. I don't see the police mistreating them. I see more black officers probably do more wrong to us than the white cops. Uh the, the jailers, the correctional officers do way more harm and damage than the police officers. I think majority of cops are good. And I, I just started liking police. But I've been, in, I've been in, 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 in rehab with a police officer before. Uh, I was wow. on probation. I've been in rehab with, with, with cops before. Uh, I, I have police friends. But for the most part, most of my friends been criminals. All right, we're going to stop right there. We're going to have more with Charleston White here on the Michael Sean Show. This is amazing. We'll be right back. What up, y'all? It's Michael Sean, and this is our business of the week. Check out the testimony from Roundhouse Paper. I decided to try Roundhouse Paper because I was tired of giving the same old, same old gifts to my nieces. I wanted to give them something they haven't gotten before and I knew that they would enjoy. So I decided to try it out on my daughter and it was a hit. She loved it. Roundhouse Paper makes the cutest stickers, stationery, and stories for the culture. Full House Bundle is the gift to go. You can find 
Roundhouse Paper on Instagram. Do you have a little reader in your life? When it comes to kids and reading, it's best to do it early and often. Roundhouse Paper creates stickers, stationery, and stories to make reading representative, relatable, and fun. Items start at only $5 with free shipping on orders $15 and up. Please visit roundhousepaper.com. Yes, welcome back to the Michael Sean Show. Our guest today, uh, Mr. Charleston White. It, we're in the middle of something. So, okay. So you've already said in in one in in one segment, you already said you've lied on the police. Yeah. You've already said um, you've seen police officers have killed more white people, in your opinion, through the FBI statistics than black people. Um. So is there? So do you feel that? They're, the police department in America is unjust, or you don't? Uh, I, I don't think it's the police department. Th these are individual people with, with ideologies, prejudice, and, and, and hateful hearts. Right. It, it's not, it's, the average cop, in my mind, is not signing up to, to risk their life and, 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 and put on a badge to, to go get back at a race. See, that's where, see, that's what, 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 where I, I push back on that because I see this, look, the police weren't, were, were invented after slavery, basically, to police. They weren't there, the police, white people. I'm just sure they were. But, sure, I, sure. I, but, 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 I want, but then at that point, so are you saying there's nothing wrong with the justice system right now? No, ain't nothing wrong with the justice system. There's something wrong with black people. Stay out the justice system. Now, ain't nothing wrong with the justice system. It wasn't ever meant to be for us, nor work for us. So why, do, why are we trying to force it to work for us? Why are we trying to force this system who we believe is unjust, we was excluded out of it, why are we trying to make it work for us? Why not create another system? That's an alternative to that system. Say, look at it, Your Honor. Rather than sending this kid to the Texas Youth Commission, I have a program that's called Hype to Bot Hype. Send him over here to us. We know him better anyway, Your Honor. Create a new system. Stay out of their system. Stop coming when the, when the police come and say, hey, who shot Johnny? Stop being quiet. Go tell a black cop. Hey, come here, black cop. Keep the white cops over here. I'll tell you who shot Johnny. Right. So if the system is bad, why aren't we recreating one to, to not be a part of theirs? And, and I, I see the sense in that. My thing is, in this country, it's very difficult to try and create an alternative system. Well, I disagree. I've done it for the last 10 years in Stop 6 with my youth program. Uh, I work on capital murder and death penalty cases, and I serve time for murder. Uh, we now, uh, I, I, I teach, I, I've taught at the United States Department of Homeland Security, Human Trafficking Division, North Texas Crime Commission at the Eastfield Police Training Academy in Mesquite. And I used to pimp. Right. And I'm teaching them, saying, hey, pimping ain't really wrong how y'all think it's wrong. A lot of you women signing up for it. Here we go. This is why. This is, go ahead, go ahead. So, so but, but, <laughs> but, but, but think about this. So the, why is pimping not, uh, I, we're well, going look, look, on a tangent, look, look. but why is pimping not wrong? Break uh, that down uh, to me. Uh, because we promote prostitution in America. When, okay. you think of, when you think of shows like Fifty Shades of Grey, mm -hmm. uh, I start my presentation off with that. H how many people realize that America have a secret love affair with whores and prostitutes? I don't know if we can say that on CW33, but go ahead. But, but, but you sorry, go, we'll, but, we'll bleep that out, but, uh, but, please, but go ahead, uh, go ahead. But, but it, 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 it's a fantasy world. Uh, I would argue that 95% of men have been with a prostitute. Military military guys get discounts. What do you think our soldiers do when they open them other seas? They ain't with their wives. They ain't with their girlfriends. For a long time, they didn't have gays in the military. So what do you think they did? They went and sought out the local prostitutes. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things that America did when they went to and invaded Iraq was they flew over the country before the soldiers even went in, and they dropped pornographic films onto the land. So those people, uh, how do you know this? Uh, how, it's, how do you know it's, this? It's, it's, it's documented. 
Oh. Is it documented? Because yeah. when everybody, because I know a lot of people like say it's documented. Where is it documented? Because I, uh, for some reason, Google doesn't have this. No, nah, you go. If you're looking for accurate information, Google is the last place you should look. You should never say, "Hey, Google, tell me about such and such." Because what Google does, Google put all the false narratives up top. You have to get to the eighth page of Google before you even get access. So where do we go to get to your that? library databases? Okay, your library databases. Okay. You have to go back to books. People are not no longer reading books. They are taking Google information yes. and having arguments at parties yes. trying to prove each other right or wrong about what Google says. Absolutely. And I'm saying, no, nah, man, all the accurate information is in the book. That's why they say if you want to hide something from somebody, put it in the book. All right. So we're going to start this question. And we only have two minutes. And I'm going to keep you here as long as I can. I'll stay as long as possible. Um, you made a comment about George Floyd. Yeah. Which was um, eye-opening to everybody. Yeah. Once again, I'm not going to debate anything with you because I want to hear your, yes, sir. what you want to say. But um, give a brief, we have, or maybe we should wait to commercials, but give a brief thought on the George Floyd. You know what? We're going to hold that. We're going to go to commercials and when we come right back, you're going to go right into your George Floyd part. All right, cool. Because I'm already getting a wrap. It's the Michael Sean Show right here on the CW33. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the Michael Sean Show. I am Michael Sean with our guest, Charleston White, and I'm trying to get right to it, Charleston White. You had an opinion on the George Floyd. Now, George Floyd shook up America. Yeah. And I thought it was clear. I thought it was a clear-cut situation. We were all on the same side. We knew that George Floyd had been killed by a police officer. Um, but then you took on to social media. Yeah. And you had a different view and opinion on it. Yeah, I saw a weak black man. Uh, who didn't have the will to live? When I when, when I saw uh, Eric Eric Gardner uh, in New York, when I saw that big old black man throw his hands up mm -hmm. and let all them white guys choke him out, and he don't throw no elbows and fight, I said, "Oh, that's a weak man." I don't defend weakness. When I saw George Floyd just later, I said, "Man, what's wrong with that? He didn't go later. No fight." He don't have no fight in him to, to live. Right. Nah, man, he laid there. Oh, uh, in, in my mind, you fight back if somebody hits you. The Dr. King concept didn't work for them, so how's it gonna work for us? In, in, in my mind, George Floyd was supposed to kick, fight, the black people that there were recording was supposed to dive in, so everybody in that situation was weak. So then I know the media playing on us because they only showed us part of a video. Him laying there. They didn't show us the whole video. Right. He down there getting high trying to pass a $20 bill, end up getting himself killed, go to jail. When did criminals, guys who committing crime, when did they stop wanting to go to jail? Cause I was taught you don't argue with the police. You tell him, take me to jail because I'm finna make bond or I'm finna go lay it down. But I ain't got no conversation for you. So when you saw the whole video, and then when they started telling us the background of this black man, man, y'all told the country up for nothing. Y'all should have told the country up for Tamir Rice. That was worth dying and, and, and burning builders down for, but not for George Floyd, who have a history, who kicked a black woman's door in, put a gun to her belly. That's what he went to prison for. Right. So, nah, man, I ain't, I, when I saw it, I said, he weak. Now, uh, I'm, if, if I got to die, they're going to have to kill. I'm going to make them kill me. I ain't right. laying there and dying like no coward. That's a coward black man to me. Okay. Was the police officer who had his knee on his neck wrong? No. White folks ain't wrong for what they do to us. What the lion do to the gazelle, that ain't wrong. This is nature. What the cat do to the rat, how, how the cat wrong? No, they ain't wrong. So you don't think the police no officer, what white what white people do to us ain't wrong what Mexicans do wrong to us ain't wrong what we do wrong to us is wrong. I expect for white people to do me bad if I go into a white restaurant. If a white police officer, I expect it. Now if he don't do it, I'm I'm surprised. Right. And that's what breaks the racial barrier that was between me and him, his actions. But I expect it. So what was it about Tamir Rice that you feel? He was a 12 year old kid playing in the park by himself, mm -hmm. by himself with a toy gun. Somebody called and said, hey, man, it's a guy out there. He was a 12-year-old kid who looks like a kid. Do we have a gun? I, I don't know, maybe. The cop, when he pulled up, he wasn't even out 60 seconds before he shoot this kid. We see it on camera as we watch George Floyd. 
why didn't we have the same outrage for this 12-year-old kid that we had for this grown black man? And I'm going to get to that. I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. So when they killed this baby, his 15-year-old sister was inside the community center. She runs outside. They grab her and put her on the ground, put her handcuffs, and put her in the car. So I'm saying, I once read where Frederick Douglass said, it is much easier to create strong children than it is to repair broken men. That's why mama let the black, black man stay on his couch to he fought it and treated him like a baby because she's still trying to repair this broken man because she didn't spend a lot of time creating a strong child. Mm -hmm. So black America ignored this child that they should have created to be strong to go turn down the country for a broken black man. And once again, those who are watching, I'm not saying I agree or disagree. What I'm saying is I'm trying to give him time because of our time restraints. I can't go back and forth. I want him to explain. So, because I already know what y'all, there are people saying, Michael Sean ain't saying this, Michael Sean ain't saying that, but Michael Sean is listening to somebody else's opinion at this point. That's why we invited him on, on the show. So, um, what I want to do is keep you here another minute. Gotcha. Well, more than another minute. Gotcha. And I want to talk about your opinion on what rappers are saying and the non-snitch oath that people are taking right here on the Michael Sean Show on the CW33. Yeah. 30 hertz, straight up. Want your book or music to be published? Skip the confusion and rejections from others. Let BePublish.org publish and promote your work for less. BePublish.org handles it all, from cover design to worldwide distribution. With high quality and fast turnaround, you even keep rights and royalties. Everything was perfect. You made my dream come true. My book and CD look so good. Call 972-880-8316 now. BePublished.org. 972-880-8316. Are you a victim of domestic violence? Since 2013, From Ordinary to Extraordinary has helped over 3,000 women, and we want to continue to rebuild the community with one family at a time. Please make a donation or sign up for volunteer opportunities today at IamFOTE.org. No matter how you choose to get involved, know that every bit counts. From Ordinary to Extraordinary is a 501c3 nonprofit organization designed to empower women and girls that have experienced domestic violence. chat can give us the personalized tips we need visit aceyourretirement.org worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out you can say how are you or get a fake tattoo you can ask with an app if it works for you you can chat with them in vr it's so good if you think you should check in yeah you should reach out to a friend about their mental health Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Yo, what's up? It's Nelly Chopper. You should subscribe to Media Room 360 TV on YouTube. They will have the first updates on me. Let's do it.